Folks, I have wanted to do this for a long time. A single MacBook, a single Thunderbolt cable, a full home studio that maximizes the amount of available space and can record 4K video from multiple cameras simultaneously. This is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. Let's talk about it. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. After years of waffling, I decided, hey, it's time to update my setup, my workspace to be more friendly for on-camera work, reviews, tutorials, product photography, podcasting, you know, the whole nine yards. This setup, folks, is primarily powered by a single 14-inch MacBook Pro connected to a single Thunderbolt cable. Now, obviously, it gets a lot more complex than that. I'm gonna show you all the ins and outs a little bit later, but it's also made possible by a lot of different software packages, such as Movie Recorder, which is a pricey but fantastic application from Softron. Movie Recorder allows me to simultaneously record high-quality HEVC encoded video in a multi-cam setup from multiple cameras directly to my computer Computer, bypassing the need for SD cards or CF Express cards entirely. In addition to eliminating the need to offload media, this setup also keeps all of my cameras charged and ready to go. And with just the press of a single button, I can power on or power off all my cameras at the same time. I can even switch between the various camera angles and stop or start recording with just a single button press. So folks, join me in this first episode of Back to the Mac for 2024 as I walk through the ins and outs of this new workspace. And be sure to subscribe to 9 to 5 Mac on YouTube for more videos. Now let's check it out. At the center of my setup is the aforementioned 14 inch MacBook Pro featuring an M1 Max chip and 32 gigabytes of RAM. This machine continues to impress me just by how utterly capable it is, even though it's several years old. Now the 512 gigabytes of configured storage isn't ideal, but since Movie Recorder can encode in HEVC, the storage limit is much less of an issue than if I were working with ProRes encoded video. It's performed so well that I haven't really felt a need to be rushed to upgrade. Now I sold my Pro Display XDR, which was a staple of my setup since since early 2020 and I picked up the studio display and I will admit I do miss the Pro Display XDR but the smaller size and the added functionality of having a camera, having speakers, it just fits better for my workspace and I've been able to sort of work around the HDR or lack thereof. The MacBook Pro and studio display sit on top of this Husky mobile workbench from Home Depot. This 52 inch workbench includes a wood desktop with two drawers underneath and the drawers are actually pretty essential for my setup. Although I did remove the top drawer to give me some clearance to fit everything inside. And this actually allows me to access things inside the drawer without actually Actually having to open up the drawer so I can go in and tap on the smart pads on the Rodecaster Duo for instance to turn the cameras on or off without actually opening the drawer which is really cool. Now the Husky workbench also features four high quality casters so that I can quickly move it around to reconfigure my shooting space and the bench is also height adjustable although it is the manual hand crank variety which obviously is not as nice as the powered standing desk that we're all used to by Dell. Another desktop staple is the Elgato Wave mic arm LP microphone arm with the Shure SM7DB attached. Now the Shure SM7DB sounds fantastic and it's non-boosted iteration. The regular SM7B is like the de facto standard for podcasters everywhere. The Elgato Way costs just $99 by the way, but it's surprisingly well designed and I love the low profile stature, which makes it ideal for on camera work because it's not blocking your face. Although in my case, you might wish it did. <laughs> Now the Rode interface that I mentioned is an insanely capable all-in-one production studio that features powerful preamps, it features smart pads, it features sound effects, it features MIDI, and a ridiculous amount of connectivity options. You can even connect it and route audio from two Macs at the same time if you want to. Or you can connect it to your iPad Pro or your iPhone 15 Pro via USB-C. Really, there's so much you can do with this thing, I've barely scratched the surface. Now the Rode Wireless Pro is an extremely capable lapel microphone that sounds great. And what makes what makes it even better is that it pairs directly with the Rodecaster Duo, simplifying my setup. I don't have to have a separate receiver for it, for instance. I also use the Elgato Stream Deck Plus, which is a controller that allows you to do all sorts of things, but I primarily use it to control the Elgato prompter that's attached to my A-cam right here that I'm looking at right now. The dials on the Elgato Stream Deck Plus are ideal for scrubbing back and forth through the script, changing the speed of the teleprompter, and even adjusting the display brightness. I really like this thing. It's helped me out a lot.
It took a while, but the USB-C Thunderbolt cable now lives up to the promises initially laid out during the 2016 MacBook Pro refresh launch. If you can remember, we were promised a single cable that could provide power, connect to peripherals, and even drive displays. Accessory makers took a few years to get on board, but now we have a vast array of Thunderbolt-enabled products to choose from, and it's really what makes my setup work the way it does. Connected to my MacBook Pro is a single three-meter Thunderbolt cable from Apple. This cable is costly, but it is extremely well built and it's long enough to move my MacBook around while staying connected. For instance, I can go sit on the couch and still work and maintain my connectivity. A second three meter Thunderbolt cable connects one of my hub interfaces to another Thunderbolt enabled interface, which makes the whole setup work. Now with just a single Thunderbolt cable, I'm able to connect my MacBook Pro to the following devices. The Apple Studio Display, the Rode Roadcaster Duo, the SM7DB, the OWC 8 terabyte Envoy Express SSD, the Rode Wireless Pro transmitter, the Elgato prompter, the Elgato Stream Deck Plus, and three Sony FX30 cameras. These connections are all made possible by several additional hardware devices in between, including the OWC Thunderbolt Hub, the Sonnet Echo 20 Thunderbolt 4 Super Dock, the CalDigit Thunderbolt 4 Element Hub, the OWC Mercury Helios 3S, and the CalDigit Soho Dock. Now, full disclosure, I am a CalDigit ambassador. That means sometimes I make paid content for CalDigit independently of 9 to 5 Mac. I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware of that. Inside the OWC Mercury Helios 3S external PCIe enclosure is the Blackmagic Design Decklink Quad HDMI recorder. I know that's a mouthful, but the Decklink Quad, as its name alludes to, features four HDMI inputs on a single interface, allowing me to connect up to four Sony FX30 cameras simultaneously. Now, why did I choose the FX30? Well, the FX30 is the Super 35 version of the popular full frame FX3, and it's a highly capable camera for its asking price. It's, in my opinion, hands down, one of the best values in cameras today. Now, because my studio, studio, it's a bedroom. I mean, come on, who am I kidding? It's, just, it's a spare bedroom and it's super small, but I wanted to make sure I saved a lot of floor space, so I mounted as much as I could. In fact, I'm using an impact boom arm, so the overhead camera resides directly above my Husky mobile workbench, and it works great for product showcases and detailed unboxing videos. It also has a power zoom lens on there so I can zoom in or zoom out to get all the detail. Or if I have a big product unboxing, I can get all that in the shot as well. Now, two additional cameras reside directly in front of my workbench. The first camera mounted to the wall above the television is for talking headshots. It's what I'm actually looking at right now. This FX30 is paired with the Sony FE 35mm f1.4 GM lens and attached to the front of the lens is the Elgato prompter. Now, beneath the talking head camera, mounted on a tripod is another FX30. I use this camera for detailed product shots on the desktop using a Sony Nifty 50. The final FX30 is my so-called floating camera. Sometimes I use it handheld, sometimes I have it paired to a gimbal, sometimes I have it on a tripod. I typically use this camera to capture everything else the mounted cameras cannot practically capture. And sometimes I have it connected to the multi-cam setup as well, just depends on what I'm doing. The Thunderbolt cable connected to my MacBook Pro goes directly to the upstream port of the OWC Thunderbolt hub, which is mounted on the back of the Husky mobile workbench. The 8TB SSD, which is also mounted on the bench, and the studio display both connect to this hub. The CalDigit Soho dock connects to the OWC Thunderbolt hub and provides me with a few more necessary ports. The Soho dock is also mounted to the back of the workbench, and I have it connected to the Rodecaster Duo, which is then connected, of course, to the Shure SM7. DB. This setup makes it so that I can maintain the connections to critical components like my microphone, the external drive, the external display, while being disconnected from the rest of the hardware in the setup. The second three meter Thunderbolt cable in my setup routes from a port on the OWC Thunderbolt hub to the uplink port on the CalDigit Thunderbolt 4 element hub inside the console beneath my television. Occasionally I would experience some handshaking issues when waking up my MacBook Pro and I found that introducing the CalDigit hub into the mix reduced the handshaking issues, and it also made it so I could easily power cycle the hub to get everything back online if needed. The Sonnet Echo 20 Thunderbolt 4 Super Dock is a fantastic piece of hardware for the sheer amount of ports it allows you to access from a single interface. It also features a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, which I have connected to my AT&T fiber connection. Now, this provides my MacBook Pro with fast upload and download speeds, which is a great thing for YouTube and, of course, live streaming with OBS. Now, the second, more important reason that I use the Sonnet Echo 20 Thunderbolt 4 
for SuperDock is that it features terrific power delivery properties. Sonus Dock features multiple USB ports that provide consistent power to attach devices via USB-C. In addition to connecting all of my FX30s to my MacBook Pro so that I can control them remotely, the Sonnet Dock also helps keep all the connected cameras charged, eliminating the need to switch out batteries or worse yet, utilize dangerous dummy batteries. Finally, there's the OWC Mercury Helios 3S. I installed the Blackmagic Design Decklink Quad HDMI recorder inside this PCIe Thunderbolt enclosure. The FX30s connect to the Decklink Quad via HDMI cables, and while I'm pretty bad at cable management, I try my best to make it look somewhat presentable. Before I learned about Movie Recorder, I was using Blackmagic Media Express to interface with my cameras via the Decklink hardware. Unfortunately, Media Express can only interface with a single camera at a time, which means that you have to run multiple instances of the same app to get multiple cameras connected. It works, but it gets a little messy and a little bit confusing. But the bigger problem with using Blackmagic Media Express is the limited amount of codec options. ProRes 422 Proxy was the most lightweight option, and those files as you probably know, can still get quite huge. And that poses a big problem for my MacBook Pro, which doesn't have that much storage, and even a large external drive, it can quickly fill up. But Movie Recorder solves both of these issues. As long as your computer is capable, it can simultaneously capture video from multiple cameras, encoding them in HEVC, which is obviously a much smaller file size. Softron gave me a trial license throughout my testing, letting me capture four inputs, and many other license options are available, even one that allows you to capture up to eight inputs. But like I said before, it gets pricey pretty quick. Now, the great thing about Movie Recorder is just how dead simple it is. It is extremely easy to get going. Video devices from companies like Blackmagic or Aja or NDI sources are automatically discovered and surfaced, so it's just a matter of clicking a checkbox next to the local sources, which are immediately displayed in the viewer. Again, dead simple. Movie Recorder also lets you rename sources. For instance, I have Talking Head, Desk, Overhead, Extra as source names, and you can configure details for each source like resolution, frame rate, audio source, and even time code settings. Destination settings let you configure codec, including super efficient 10-bit HEVC, the save location, custom naming, which is something I wish I could do at OBS, metadata, and much more. You can even set up Apple scripts to trigger at the start or the end of a recording. I feel like I'm just like scratching the surface of what is possible with Movie Recorder, and I could probably make the process even more efficient than it already is. For multi-cam setups, Movie Recorder also includes handy gang control. Controls. These controls allow you to simultaneously start or stop capturing footage from all enabled sources at the same time. Again, this is super handy for multicam setups because it captures video from every source with just a single click. And it's something I definitely miss having with OBS. Now that being said, because I cannot afford a full movie recorder license, I use OBS for all my capturing, all my live streaming functions in my day-to-day -day workflow. And I really don't have that many complaints about OBS. The greatest thing about it, of course, is that it's absolutely free and free is good, right? But OBS works well. It's highly customizable. It has some of the features that I prefer when compared to other software. And the main issue I counter with OBS is that it just doesn't allow you to record from multiple sources at the same time without using a plugin and the plugin that I tried didn't work very well. It's just, it's not an ideal experience. That's my main complaint with OBS, just not being able to capture multiple sources simultaneously. But there are other issues. It has a much higher learning curve than Movie Recorder, but it's probably by far the best solution for those on a budget. It's also great too, because it can record in high quality HEVC video, which is gonna save you space. Now I use the smart pads on the Rodecaster Duo to control OBS via MIDI commands, interpreted by the amazing Better Touch Tool utility for Mac. So with just a quick press on the smart pads, I can cycle through all the camera angles, start and stop recordings, and more. I have much more on how I use OBS in an upcoming post and video. Being able to quickly and efficiently control this setup was absolutely instrumental to me. My goal was to have as little friction as possible, and here are some of the ways that this setup helps remove that friction. The FX30 features USB power delivery, and that lets me keep the cameras charged via a USB-C cable. I have each FX30 connected to a port on the Sonnet Echo 20 Thunderbolt 4 Super Dock via USB. Thus, all three of my main FX30s are always ready to go when it's time to start filming. Now, I use several smart switches, such as the Eve energy to power on and power off my cameras using shortcuts. For example, the Sonnet Echo 20 Thunderbolt 4 Super Dock is connected to one of these smart switches, and I created a simple shortcut to control the timing of the power in order to manage the connected FX30s. To turn on the cameras, I simply created a shortcut that looks like this. 
The power off the cameras, which involves actually putting them to sleep using the FX30's battery management settings, the shortcut is a little bit more complex to accommodate for the FX30's power management timing. The goal of this shortcut was to put all connected cameras to sleep at the same time and also make it so that the cameras would begin charging once they were asleep. Now importantly, the FX30 will not actually charge while awake, even if you have a USB-C cable connected. If you don't get the timing right, sending power to the FX30 via the USB-C cable will actually wake the devices and thus prevent them from charging. So it took a little bit of guess and checking to figure out the exact timing for my shortcut, but in the end, it works. After the shortcuts were configured, I then mapped them to a smart pad on the Rodecaster Duo. So with the simple press of the smart pad, I can power on or power off all of my FX30s in one fell swoop. Sony's excellent Imaging Edge desktop features a remote tether option that lets you control various aspects of the camera via USB-C. This is yet another benefit of having each camera connected to my MacBook Pro via the setup routing that I explained earlier. So on my Mac, I have a dedicated desktop page that I can swipe to that features three instances of the Sony remote for controlling all three cameras if needed. I don't use the remote control often, but in certain situations it can be handy when you need to change an exposure value or change the focus area and you don't feel like getting up and actually going to the camera itself. Now the Elgato prompter connects to my setup via USB and it also integrates with the Stream Deck Plus for direct control. With it, I can easily scroll forward or backward through my script, quickly jump between paragraphs, change the font size and brightness or start or stop scrolling via the dial controls on the Stream Deck Plus. Now, the Elgato prompter is not perfect, especially the software that leaves a little bit to be desired, but having a dedicated teleprompter, to be honest, has been an absolute game changer for me. It saved me tons of time. Stay tuned for a full breakdown and review of the Elgato prompter in a later video. So conclusion, this is my home studio setup in a nutshell. Of course, there are many other aspects to this setup, such as lighting that I haven't touched on. Perhaps I'll save that for another post and video. And obviously this setup isn't perfect and it's not gonna be for everyone, but I thought I would share because first of all, a lot of people have asked me like, what's my setup? What does it look like? And maybe there'll be something in this video that will help you uh, add special touches to your setup, who knows? But the whole point was to streamline my workflow to reduce friction as much as possible. And I think this setup up largely achieves this. There's no juggling SD cards or CF Express cards. Everything's ingested right to my external SSD. It's basically just a matter of pressing a couple of buttons and you're ready to go. I don't even have to manage with batteries or any of that. And that really does help speed up my workflow and just reduces overall friction. But the biggest takeaway, in my opinion, about this whole setup is just how flexible and capable the MacBook Pro is. I mean, right? The 14 inch MacBook Pro from several years back is controlling all all this and doing it without even breaking a sweat. And because it's connected with just that single Thunderbolt cable, I can easily just simply, you know, eject my SSD, remove the Thunderbolt cable, take my MacBook with me, and then I'm working on the go. It really is a cool setup and it pretty much just works. So what do you guys think about my setup? Do you have any suggested changes or observations that you've made? Sound off down below in the comments with your thoughts and be sure to leave a thumbs up that helps other people know that this video is legit. And of course, subscribe to 9to5Mac on YouTube for more. This is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. I'll catch you next time.